Across the Goal Line, a sports podcast. I'm your host, the Encyclopedia of Sports, Luke Austin. In this video, I will be recapping week 10 of the NFL season and preview week 11. Any uh, sounds or pictures that you uh, will see in this video, I do not take credit for. I do not take credit for those. I do not own them. The only thing that I do own is the across the goal line picture and this audio recording. So I repeat any pictures or sounds that you uh, are about to see in this video, I do not own other than uh, my across the goal line picture and this audio recording. So uh, across the goal line is on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, all the links and my social media as well are in the description below so be sure to go check those out if you haven't done so already as I said I'm going to recap week 10 of the 2017 NFL season and preview week 11 by the way if you do go check out uh, uh, across the goal line on any of those pages uh, especially the YouTube uh, be sure to go check out my 2017 uh, college football week 12 and I threw some little uh, coaching carousel uh, discussion into that video as well so be sure to go check that out and give it a thumbs up let me know what you think uh, be greatly appreciated uh, so without uh, waiting any longer to get into um, predictions I'll recap right now one eight and two last week 59 and 39 on the year pretty good I've had four or five weeks in a row now um, that I've been over 500 surprisingly uh, so I'm, I'm happy that my record is where it is at um, the Steelers defeated the Colts Sunday afternoon on a Chris Boswell game winning field goal 20 to 17 the Saints went to Buffalo, absolutely destroyed the Buffalo Bills, uh, 47-10. They scored um, six times by rushing the football. That's the Saints that scored six rushing touchdowns, not the Bills. The Packers defeated the Bears 23-16. The Jaguars beat the Chargers in overtime in Jacksonville, 20-17. Uh, the Titans beat the Bengals. Uh, Marcus Mariota found DeMarco Murray with about 40 seconds left. The Titans beat the Bengals 24-20. Vikings went on the road to D.C. Landover, Maryland, beat the Redskins 38-30. The Rams uh, held their turf as the Houston Texans came to town, defeated Tom Savage in the Houston Texans 33-7. The Houston Texans might want to consider... Uh, playing somebody else at quarterback seven points in back-to-back -back weeks is not going to cut it in the National Football League. Yeah, it does suck that Deshaun Watson went down and your season went down the drain with it, but, you know, you got to do something. The Falcons beat the Cowboys at home Sunday afternoon in America's Game on the Week uh, on uh, Fox, 27-7. That was the first game the Cowboys played without Ezekiel Elliott this season. He is currently suspended for the next five games now. That was the first of six. He uh, said he is going overseas to do some training during his suspension, so he is currently not in the United States of America. The Patriots beat the Broncos on Sunday Night Football 41-16, and then the Panthers beat the Dolphins last night uh, on Monday Night Football 45-21. Today's Tuesday, November 14th, 2017. Just got done recording my uh, Week 12 and Carousel discussion uh, video for college football. So like I said, if you um, haven't uh, gone and uh, listened to that yet here on YouTube uh, or shared it on any social media, be sure to do so. Uh, biggest upset in the NFL. There's not really an upset in the NFL. It's more for college, but... I still have it in here, but I didn't think there was one uh, this past week, again, for the second straight week. Best game, I mean, 
I'm just throwing these in here for the hell of it. The Steelers and Colts and the Chargers and Jaguars both uh, were final at 20 to 17, uh, and both were won on game-winning field goals. Um, you know, the Steelers Colts game I watched in it in its entirety, um, as I am a Steeler fan. Uh, so um, that game, you know, the the Colts were up 17 to nine there at one point, and then. Uh, Pittsburgh uh, scored 11, 11 unanswered, excuse me, and won the game 20 to 17. But other than that, it really wasn't that great to watch. Uh, it really wasn't that exciting. It had some uh, some big plays in it, but and it got exciting there at the end. And then the Chargers Jaguars game, I caught the tail end of that uh, in the fourth quarter, and then uh, in overtime. And it was also exciting there at the end, so that's why I threw that in there for best game. I don't know really how it uh, played out uh, the rest of the game, but I do. Well, I do know that the Jaguars uh, effectively, uh, effectively, um, it's a word I want to use, um, effectively. Uh, God damn it! What's the word I want to use? Uh, I can't think right now. I'm watching Duke and Michigan State, uh, so my attention's towards that. But I'm trying to I'm trying to record here at the same time. Um, they executed that fake punt, and uh, really, that's what won them the game. I think because if they don't do that, um, you know, they end up losing in regulation. Uh, you know, the Chargers they they fumbled there late. And um, Jaguars ended up getting the ball back. Chargers got the ball back then. And then Jacksonville had their three timeouts and called them, and Jacksonville got the ball back, tied the game, sent it to every time, and then they won it every time. So executed was the word I was looking for. So it took me some time, but I found it. As I'm watching this Duke-Michigan State one versus two game uh, right now, Duke's up with 6 minutes and 31 seconds left to go in the first half, 24-17. to 17. Um, Hopefully Duke wins. I am a Duke Blue Devil fan, if you did not know that, for college basketball. Um, and I only like Duke for men's college basketball. So um, back to the NFL now. Uh, impressed the Saints. They put up 47. Uh, they've won seven in a row. They scored six times on the ground. That's pretty impressive, if you ask me. So... They were the team that impressed me this past week and then disappointed the Cowboys. You know, they uh, they really couldn't do anything uh, there without Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, I know they were down Sean Lee and uh, Tyron Smith there for most of the game, but, you know, you think they would have played with a little bit more effort. Now, I do, I do understand Adrian Claiborne had five or six sacks and got after that Dallas, that great Dallas offensive line, but, you know, it's only one game. Dallas, really, they're looking at the wild card because Philly basically has the NFC East locked up with that 8-1 and one record at the moment. You know, uh, we still do have uh, a lot of football left to be played uh, the whole way up to New Year's Eve, uh, December 31st this year for the regular season, and then the playoffs will start the following week. Um, the uh, Eagles and Cowboys actually play this uh, Sunday night on NBC for Sunday Night Football. And they also have to play each other again um, by the end of the year as well. So these teams are going to face off twice. You know, Dallas could win both these games, get right back in the hunt. hunt, And, uh, you know, who knows what happens with the Redskins. The Giants are basically done. Uh, It's pretty sad. I thought they would have contended somewhat this year. But, yeah, they had some injuries. So their season went down the shitter as well. Uh, As I said in my uh, video the other day for – my week 10 predictions uh, for NFL games this this year uh, the 2017 season for the NFL has been the year of the injury uh, you've had guys like Aaron Rodgers uh, Carson Palmer um, Odell Beckham Jr. from the Giants you know uh, JJ Watt uh, uh, Deshaun Watson uh, who probably would have won rookie of the year if he didn't go down who knows he still might he did have a strong performance 
uh, the first half of the year before he did go down with that uh, torn ACL injury. But, you know, who knows that there's a lot of football left to be played. Um, now I'll get into the games this week, uh, week 11, uh, Carolina, Indianapolis, the New York football uh, Jets. Shouldn't have said that. They're the New York football Giants. The New York J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Sorry, Jets and Giants fans. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking there. And the San Francisco 49ers all have buys this week, so they will not be playing. This is the final week for bye weeks in the NFL. Uh, So everybody will uh, have, or everybody will be playing um, weeks 12 through 17 as they did weeks 1 through 4, 1 through 3. I believe the first bye week was week 4 or 5. Um, so, as I said, without any further ado, I will get into predictions uh, now for this week. Uh, the Titans go to Pittsburgh on Thursday night for Thursday night football on NBC and NFL Network. Uh, this game on paper is probably the best Thursday night football game of the year so far, going into it on paper. Uh, we'll have to see how the game turns out, if it you know ends up being a good game or not. But I, I really think Tennessee can go into Pittsburgh and win. But me being a Steelers fan, I got to take the Steelers. They're playing at home. If they were playing in Nashville, um, you know I'd probably take the Titans. The last time these two teams played, they met also in prime time on Monday night back in 2014. Um, and Pittsburgh won that game as well. These two teams have a rich history against each other. I remember growing up early 2000s, um, you know, Jerome Bettis was going up against Eddie George, and Tommy Maddox was going up against Steve McNair. Who are you going to give uh, give the line to? Uh, you know, I would have gave it to McNair and, you know, Eddie George, rather whether or not I was a Steelers fan or not. Uh, and... Nine times out of ten, the Titans did defeat the Steelers, especially in the playoffs a couple years. Um, And, you know, rest in peace, Steve McNary has been dead for almost ten years now, I think. Um, He was murdered by his girlfriend at the time, I believe. Uh, But that's, you know, not really part of my prediction, but uh, it really doesn't mean anything. But... um, this should be a really, really good game. we got Le'Veon Bell going up against DeMarco Murray. Uh, you know, Roethlisberger against Mariota. Uh, Dick LeBeau, current uh, Titans defensive coordinator, going up against one of his old squads, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, and I think it's going to be a really, really good game come Thursday night. Really, really close, I think. But I think Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh pulls it out in the end. I think it's going to come down... Uh, possibly to special teams, to the kicking and punting, um, field field possession. Um, so, especially playing in Pittsburgh, uh, late in the year, uh, cold weather, fans are going to be into it. They'll play Renegade there in the middle of the fourth quarter sometime. I think Pittsburgh comes out on top. Arizona then goes to Houston. I could take the Cardinals. Yeah, they're both without their starting quarterbacks for the year. Both Carson Palmer and Sean Watson uh, are done for the season. Drew Stanton, uh, he might play this week. He might not. He's been having a better couple games as the backup, well, as the starter now over Tom Savage, in my opinion. Um, as I said, he might play. Um, if he doesn't, I still think the Cardinals win. You got Adrian Peterson over uh, Lamar Miller. Uh, Houston's defense, I think if they do stop Peterson, though, they do have a good chance to win, but uh, I think Arizona's going to go on the road and win. Baltimore goes to Green Bay. Uh, I think uh, think Baltimore picks up the win. Brett Hundley, yeah, he he played all right against the Bears on Sunday, and they won by seven, but they really should have lost that game, if you ask me. Green Bay, they might want to, you know, think about having a better backup 
the next time Aaron Rodgers does go down, if he does go down again, knock on wood that he doesn't. Um, Baltimore will win, though, I think. Look like Kirk Herbstreit agrees with me. Or no, he doesn't. Sorry. As I said, I'm watching this Duke and Michigan State game at the moment and getting a little sidetracked, but um, they're talking to Kirk Herbstreit right now. His top six uh, was Oklahoma, Alabama, Miami, Clemson, Washington, uh, not Washington, Wisconsin, and Auburn. I had said in my college football uh, week 12 predictions, if you didn't go listen to it yet or if you missed it, I'll spoil, spoil the news for my uh, college football playoff rankings. As I said in that video, they did not come out yet. They're, they're coming out in between these two basketball games. Um, I, my top five, Auburn would have been my sixth team. My top five was Alabama at one. Miami at two. Or no. I had I had Alabama one. Let me think. I know I just got done recording that, but I gotta think. Um, Alabama, Oklahoma, Miami, Clemson, Wisconsin, and then Auburn would have been my sixth. Um, so as I said, I'm getting a little sidetracked here, but oh well. Best game of the week in the NFL, I think, this upcoming week is the 7-2 and Rams playing the 7-2 and Minnesota Vikings uh, in Minneapolis. This should be one hell of a game. Both offenses are playing pretty damn well. I got to give the edge to the LA Rams, though. I think their offense is a tad bit better. If Sam Bradford was playing uh, for the Vikings, I think Minnesota, you know, who knows if Minnesota will even be in that position, though, right now at 7 and 2 if Bradford didn't get hurt. Case Keenum has played really, really well in his absence. And now Teddy Bridgewater's R, he's, he dressed this past Sunday when they played the Redskins. And, uh, you know, I guess if they need him to come in and play, he's able to. So. Um, and he'll be ready to go, so we'll have to see. But uh, Dalvin Cook, if he was healthy as well, he's another guy on that injury injury list. Um, if if he was playing this game, both these running backs would probably have over 100 yard, 100 maybe. I I shouldn't say 200 yards a piece, but probably close to 150 yards a piece, I'd say. Um, but uh, the Rams. Jared Goss playing playing phenomenal. I, I got to take the Rams on the road. Uh, the Redskins then team I just talked about. They lost the Vikings. They go to New Orleans to play the Saints. I think New Orleans is going to win. Pick up their eighth win in a row. I don't know the last time a team won eight straight in the NFL. I'd have to look into that. Uh, makeup game from week one, actually rescheduled uh, as. Um, the Buccaneers go to Miami to play the Dolphins. Uh, this game was rescheduled because of Hurricane Irma week one, the way back in the middle of September, if you remember that. So two months later, these two teams are finally playing. Uh, I got to take the Dolphins at home. They played uh, pretty well against the Raiders and looked pretty good two weeks ago against the Raiders on Sunday night. They didn't look so hot last night on Monday Night Football, though, but Jay Cutler a veteran and experienced quarterback is going head to head with Ryan Fitch, who is also a veteran and an experienced quarterback in the NFL. But I got to give the the edge to Cutler. I think Cutler's ten times better than Fitzpatrick. Tampa's offense might be better, but without Jameis, you know, they're not really anything special. There weren't really anything special with him this year. They've been a big disappointment as well. I had them actually in the Super Bowl against the Raiders. I doubt that's going to happen, uh, but we'll see. Still got a lot of football to be play, left to be played. Uh, anything can happen. That's why we play the games. But I think Miami will beat the Buccaneers on Sunday. Uh, Cincinnati goes to Denver to play the Broncos. i got to take the Bungles. The Patriots and Raiders play in Mexico City. The Raiders play the Texans in Mexico City. 
last year on Monday Night Football. These two teams will play on Sunday afternoon on CBS. Should be a close game. I give the edge to Oakland. I think this will be a game, you know, late you'll see Tom Brady all pissed off, storming off the field because they lost. The Eagles and Cowboys, as I said, play on Sunday night. Got to take Philly coming off that bye, except, especially with uh, the Cowboys uh, without Ezekiel Elliott. I think that's another reason why to pick the Eagles. And then a great game on Monday night, maybe the best game on paper going in on Monday night so far, the Falcons and Seahawks from Seattle. Rematch of the divisional uh, playoff game last year in Atlanta uh, at the old Georgia Dome. Two teams played uh, last year or the year before, though, uh, in Seattle during the regular season. Uh, and Atlanta had got screwed, I believe it was last year in October sometime. Um, I think I think Seattle's going to win. They just put CJ Procise on IR today, but he really wasn't doing anything special. A lot of guys that have got hurt this year or really haven't lived up to the expectations, um, if you ask me, but, you know, that's just my opinion. Seattle, I think, will beat the Falcons on Monday night. You know, Monday night games in Seattle are really fun to watch. I remember the Phil Mary game against the Packers back in 2013. That's when they had the replacement refs. Um, that was a fun game to watch, but... Um, and, and, you know, hopefully hopefully this game will be as well. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, this has been Across the Goal Line. Like I said, check out College Football. Survivor Series is actually this Sunday as well. And WWE NXT TakeOver War Games from Houston as well. I will be giving uh, some predictions for that here coming up very, very shortly. So keep an eye out for all those videos. And um, as I said... Go check out Across the Goal on, on, uh, on all social media.